o'clock. Um, first item is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have any additions to the agenda? I don't. No, I don't. It seems like it's fairly full. I had um, I wanted to add an executive session to talk about legal matters. All right. Um, and that pertains to some of the literature I passed around. Right. You had uh, one already for uh, personnel. Yeah. So we'll, we'll add one for that as well. Yeah. yeah. Good. <clears throat> That one for personnel, it, yeah, I put that on there. We actually don't really need it at this point. I can strike it. We can strike that out. Yeah, okay. I, I've actually incorporated that into the uh, my staff report instead. Okay. So All we'll, right. Great. So we'll strike the uh, discussion on personnel issues and executive session. So then, just the legal. It'll just be a legal map. Yep. Did you get those corrections, Lisa. Yeah. So I do have an item to add, if you would like to. It's just, um, so I got late last week, I got a request by, uh, from Green Mountain Power. Um, one of the properties that we got um, during the FEMA, the buyout, FEMA buyout, uh, by the bridge out there, by Gilead Brook. There's a property that we spent, yeah, right there. So was it Spring Hollow, yeah. you said, yeah. Um, anyway, they're, they're, because the bridge is being realigned out there, they need to have, Green Mountain Power needs to have an easement across the property. Um, we put their power lines in, their overhead power lines, and this is just an easement that they're asking for on that property. So uh, it does require our signature by, I believe, everybody on the board. So and everybody on the board got that on uh, Friday? Actually, no, it doesn't. It just it would be just me, actually, but it, I would need to have a, a motion by you. So uh, if you would like to add that to the, to the, the agenda, it's just a, uh, an easement, remote power know, easement I'm request. Right. Mm -hmm. Make a motion that we add that. Item to the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll add the Green Mountain Power easement discussion. Uh, we'll put that uh, right behind the Ford Mill discharge. Okay. So we we'll call it Green Mountain Power easement request. That'll work for you guys. All right. <coughs> We will open it up to. So now I make a motion that we oh, yeah. accept the agenda as written. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> okay. uh, uh, All right. All right. We'll open it up to public comment or inquiry. Anything that's not on the agenda for this evening. Okay. Take me. Yeah. From Louisville. So. Um, just to kind of refresh, I, I attended a select board meeting back in October uh, with some concern about excessive speed up in my neck of the woods and some vandalism on my property with somebody who did some wheelies. Um, and there was some, uh, a, a, my request to have something posted for speed and there was some discussion about having a survey of the town and you know, kind of figure out what's going on with speed limits. Um, and then I attended the meeting, uh, meeting in March after I had investigated a little bit and found out that actually my neck, that five mile length of road up in Louisville is, is in the town ordinance posted at 25 miles an hour. But there are no signs. And there still are no signs. And um, in looking, in reading the minutes of the select board's meeting, uh, select board's meeting I didn't see any reference to any kind of survey having been done. There was some discussion about having two rivers do a town survey. You know. And I understand there's so much going on. You guys are, gals are really busy. Um, but I'm, I'm going to just request that you know, we just get some 25 mile speed limit signs put up there since the ordinance does define the speed limit as 25 for that you know, five miles of road. Summer is approaching. I'm already seeing, you know, they're, they're seeing more traffic. Um, uh, I'm sure very soon they'll start being those caravans of land rovers and jeeps that like to go up there on the weekends and things like that. And I, I just really would like to see something designated for for that stretch of road. Um, a week ago, we had a neighborhood cookie swap. So there were about 20 really little people that kind of got together. And one of the things I made sure everybody knew was that 
speed limit is 25, and, and most of the neighbors who were there were said, wow, that would be good if we could get people to just drive a little bit slower. So in the absence of a grand town-wide study of speed limits, you know, maybe four or five 25 mile speed signs coming into Lilyville? Sure. I well, just, the, the idea was not a town-wide survey. It was, it was a survey not of speeds, but of where we are missing signs. Yeah. So, and, and that's been ongoing. It has been ongoing. There's also been, and we did talk a little bit about a town-wide um, speed study. Yeah. Um, and I reached out to Two Rivers, and they said we can't do a, a, a comprehensive town-wide, but we could definitely pick any number of roads that you would like to focus on, and, and we could do a speed study. That's a little different from what you're talking about, though. It sounds like the ordinance are, is already established. Um, we can we can see if we can round up some some 25 mile an hour speed limit signs, and we'll look at the new TCD book, which is our guiding book for okay. that, and place them where we can. I'll talk to Alan about that. Okay. Um, knowing that 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 speed limit could change if the speed starts. Right. I mean, and, and, and again, you know, maybe maybe it would change in the future, but right. I really, I just really feel like we need to get something yeah. out there. And, so where you typically see speed signs is where you have um, roads that come together. Mm -hmm. So um, do you do you see any signs at all as you come on to Lilliesville? Are there any? No, I mean, the sign, and when I came in October, I handed out a hand-drawn yeah. map that I had done, if you remember. Unfortunately, I didn't keep a copy for myself, but when you, if you're coming up uh, uh, from the river road and turn right to go up, you push your stockbridge right then, but once you get into Bethel, there's no sign. When Brink Hill intersects with the Lilyville Triangle, mm -hmm. there's no sign. If yeah. you're up at the Four Corners, coming from either you know Stockbridge or from Rochester right. down uh, on the Campbell Road, there's no signs. Okay. There's, so there are no signs at all that designate that 25 mile. So I'll talk with Alan, and we can dig through the, the signs that we have, okay. see if we have any 25s that will meet the reflectivity requirements. Mm -hmm. If not, the budget starts over July 1st. Our sign budget has been exhausted. Okay. Um, but if we can find some money, we'll find the money and get it done earlier. If not, July 1st, we'll, we'll definitely order some signs. Okay. Uh, I, my guess is that we can probably round up a few signs. Okay. And get them I think anything would be yeah. yeah. That's one of our challenges why we wanted Alan to be yep. getting these surveys because once you start putting up a sign, it's, you have to have one theoretically at every location where the road en mm -hmm. enters between towns and at every intersection of the road or, some, or during some stretch. If the road changes, if the speed limit changes from 35 to 25, you have to have a speed limit sign. So it gets really complicated and right. expensive. So we were, we, as much as your point is valid, we also have administrative bureaucratic requirements on our end. Yeah, well, and I, I guess, I mean, and again, it gets, right, and, you know, I, I understand that, and, it, you know, it's time, it's money, it's manpower. I just don't want to let the issue die, especially as we're coming into this time of the year when we do see those speeds increasing with a lot of apps. Yeah, it's, it's so, so just so you're aware how this kind of is going to work is I've already went through the map. Mm -hmm. So I have a paper part and it tells me where the signs need to be in a minimum. And then Alan, when he gets time, will go out and he'll actually inventory all the signs that we currently have mm -hmm. in place and find out whether or not they meet the requirements because there's reflectivity and all kinds of other stuff. But um, that'll be later on in the summertime. It's not going to happen anytime soon. But I think if this road is, is per the ordinance, it's supposed to be posted in it doesn't have any at least the minimum posting, then we'll see what we can do and at least get a few signs up in some, some key areas. But um, I remember back to the conversation we had in March was we were we were a little unsure of exactly what the speed should be on the road, if I remember right. Like we knew we knew what it was or what it had been in the past, but there was some discussion about if we posted at a speed that is say too low, people were just gonna say oh, the heck with it, I'm just gonna drive past it anyways. And, and I know that we were going to do a speed study, which yeah. we've asked Two Rivers to do um, the village mm -hmm. piece because we had been thinking about hopefully lowering the speed limit in the village, but of course you can have a study to do it. And, and we were going to add that to the piece when they come in to do it. Sure. I haven't done it. Yeah, well, yeah. I actually spoke and I said, you know, maybe 25, you know, 25 does seem kind of slow right. to me. Yeah. Uh, it was funny though, the constable was here at that meeting and spoke and said that you know he 
thought it was not a bad idea to have it posted at 25. It might keep people down to 35 miles an hour. So again, I, you know, I'm here just to kind of make sure that it doesn't get kind of lost. And sure. Hope, hope that well, I'll look at the ordinance and see what it's posted at, and we'll see if we can't round up some minimum signage. Because uh, I don't want to go through and sign it exactly like it should be, because it could all come out. Right. And, and we're probably struggling to find the sign anyway. Uh, but we'll get something done for you. And then um, maybe that's one of the roads that we look at. A speed, a speed study takes into, a lot of different, takes into account a lot of different things. Um, I read, I don't know where I read it, I don't know if it was statute or somewhere, Orange Book or something, but um, the state has actually made recommendations to not put speed limits on dirt roads because it can create safety hazards because people go too slow or people are going too fast or whatever. They get a kind of a, a sense of comfort. If they see a speed limit, they think, oh, I can do this, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that's what we want to do. It's just. But, well, and just of interest, I, before I got here, I just was doing some research online. And, and if I'm reading this correctly, if, if you want to post a, if you want to post a road at less than their road, like a, dirt road at less than 35 miles an hour, you have to have something to back it speed, up. Speed, I a speed step. So when exactly. that road was assigned 25 miles an hour in 1989, it was on the basis of a study by Mr. Frazier. So, right, right. But a town can post a road at 35 and not have to have a study done. Correct. So You're right. You know, but if they want to do it, they want to move from that either way, there has to be some data to support their, to support. yes, yeah. yeah. But for right now, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Great. I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We have been doing some things a little bit out of order this year with the public works that in the past. Like, you know, see, one of our big targets this year was to get downtown, you know, the crosswalks painted and, you know, those types of things. Because it's been the last couple of years, the crosswalks, I don't think I painted until July or mm -hmm. August, you know, so we kind of switched some of the priorities and the signage being that we we're pretty tight on the budget, um, push that to kind of get into the new budget here. But one other thing, um, I'm sorry, just real quick, love the bump outs downtown. Okay, I'll note them. I'll note that. We've been accumulating. We, we've been accumulating comments, both of both we good, good and bad. So I'll add that to your list. Any more positive comments? <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's been kind of mixed bag. So yeah. Well, we'll add it to that. We won't forget about that. Okay, thanks. Any other public? Any other? Yeah. You're next up. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, are we good? All right, we'll move we'll along to our appointment. Okay. Great, we'll have the floor. Okay, my name is Gregory Frida. I'm president of the Bethel Historical Society. Here's a plaque in front of this building. During World War I. The Bethel Historical Society wishes to donate a monument to the town of Bethel, honoring Bethel residents that served in World War II. We would like to place this monument on the site of Fort Fortitude with the blessing of the selectmen. It will be at least a year before, before we are ready to go ahead with this project, and we will keep the select board appraised of our progress and present the select board with the final design. So we're going to donate a, uh, a monument to the top. And we'd like to put it over there back on the floor. We're toying with the idea of putting on the front of this building, but then we're going to run into historical you know, yeah, stuff. That's stuff. Yeah. 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 We don't want to do that. You should have saw it when we went through to get yeah. the clock on the floor. Stone monument or a flag? Well, we have a, a it's flag and we're going to mount it on stone. Um, that's the general idea. That's the general idea. We don't know if it's going to be marble or maybe we're going to be the granite if we get something to bend the way. Mm -hmm. you know, so we're still, we're pretty much still in the process of doing this. We've been raising money for about a year and we're almost halfway there. The flag itself is going to be in place from three to five thousand dollars. 
So what do we know about the process of putting up a monument on our municipal properties like that? That would be the only thing I wonder. Well, it would. Whether or not that's a, we have blanket authority. Like well, that. I mean, it would be, we could kind of create a, we could treat it as like an outdoor sign and it would have to meet some of those requirements possibly, but I, I don't really foresee it being a large issue. I don't either. I just don't want to say, yeah, go ahead and then find out right. that all oh, you guys have, should have done. It would be an administrative permit anyway. So if you just work with me on it, yeah. we can get mm -hmm. it taken care of. Yeah. Because there is a monument there the recognizing yeah. the placement of the floor. Yeah. It's just the, the, the legality part of it yeah. or anything. So, um, but it'd be an administrative thing anyway. So we'll be, we'll be fine. Just you like right. Yeah, and if the board approves the location. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, I think uh, Fort Fortitude is an appropriate place, particularly if you know you think that the idea might be to recognize other veterans' events and services. Um, so uh, I don't know whether it needs to be a. Uh, a motion at this point in time, or whether we just need agreement from the board, or I mean, it's all in sort of in preliminary planning right. stages. I mean, it would definitely have to be something that we that the board saw the plan and yeah, see the design yeah. and approve it at that point. I mean, I I think we're all on board. You know, I don't want to speak for everybody, but it seems like a lot of heads are nodding. So. Okay. Um, I mean, usually, typically on this, is we kind of like what we've done with BRI and, and groups like that is, is um, you know, um, get behind and encouragement. And then when the final, or, or right before the final piece is ready, then then to maybe come back and yeah, so that way they make sure that. Yeah, right. Our, right. Uh, may help with the when you get a final design and location, you just bring it back. And yeah, and that's why I was mentioning about the administrative part, just to make absolutely yeah. sure that it's something that can, that, that can be. Yeah, yeah I'll look at it from a, zoning, and, from a zoning perspective, I'll look at it, but they'll look at it from a aesthetic perspective, I guess. Yeah. I think I'd like to, this is more to the board and Greg than anybody, but I, I love the idea, and I think that um, I sort of see Fort Fortitude as this underutilized piece of our downtown, and mm -hmm. I, think that we as a town can be bringing some more attention to it in a way that will get people into it, get people using it. And I think this is kind of a perfect intersection of that. So I think my one request to the board is that sort of as we're, as we're looking at this, we're also thinking about what are the alternate uses of that space that we'd want to see or could see in the future. And I don't know if that sort of pairs in with the visioning committee or the planning mission, you know, how that works, but I think we should kind of roll it all all into the discussion as we're making some decisions about monuments. And that is a public space, so what what authority does the Conservation Commission have over things like, I know they have the, the, the public forests and things like that, I don't know if they Yeah, they would all only pertaining to conservation issues, so right. there was so a rare species not gonna or something like that, no. And probably not the Planning Commission, no. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. So another important point that I'd like to just say is an educational mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they can bring the kids from the school. And sure. No, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. You know, we just have to, it has to meet certain requirements like everything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. have to make sure it's it within those parameters. Yeah. It's no, just no. a really important house. Okay. Yeah. yeah, just get it ready. Get the final design stuff ready, and I'll show you the permit and all that, and then we'll just. Okay. Let them let them look at the final design and we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, uh, just to go over the um, the fiscal year nineteen tax rate for approval. This is. Um, I wondered if you were going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Does that adjust the rate at all? Um, I'm pleased that it did over the last time. Yeah, if you look at the one you've had in your packet versus yeah. now, that's a Oh, I'm sorry. I was just looking, I was looking at spend. Okay. Yeah. So it does a little bit, Chris. And um, you can see I wrote on your smart information, so it looks like it's a $7,001 decrease from okay. last year's brand less we calculated taxes to now. So I think that if I look at town report, I think that we had come up with a number like what 0.990 maybe Chris yeah and uh, so obviously just a little explanation too is the um, the local agreement rate is the local agreement rate is when you um, give like a veterans discount I think you do 40,000 I think a year here off of veterans bills of their tax bills and if you gave another exemption like say you had American or something, you vote on those, you know, every three to five years at town meeting. So when voters agree to do that, that's great, but we still are liable for the school tax. So that's what makes up your local agreement rate. But we still have to pay the paper the school our state. Okay. So that's, you know, what that is. And obviously the school tax, I call the state, we're not going to see that number until she said, you said, oh, we talk about the 4th of July, which is tough for, for Bethel because you have to get your tax bills out. You don't have to be at 30 about 30 days prior to the due date. So mm -hmm. that's hard for people. So we're certainly waiting on that. But these are the numbers I waited for Louise. That's where I was. So she they did help with their grievances. And this is that will change. Obviously, if anything goes to the PCA, that's a process. And you don't raise your tax rate on that. And some of the slight change due to the added amount that went to human services that was on top of the warning. I did change. Yep, you'll see that the general fund amount one nine four four oh was one seven was increased by five hundred dollars because they voted yeah. at it at town meeting to increase the budget that we put forward by yeah. that. So that's increased there as well. And basically it's all the math, right? It's just the cost minus the five hundred grand right. list and there's your number. I'm not sure how you seen it in the past, so <coughs> It started off that way. Yes. Um, I think the final version is not going to be nearly as high as we had envisioned, but I think I heard somewhere in the, I don't know, we're still waiting for the stage to the balance there. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. in the six to eight cents is what I'm hearing. Yeah, so you will see. Which started off at whatever, mm -hmm. 12 or 14 yeah. or more. And doing the <laughs> so you'll see some sort of decrease, yeah. which is nice to the taxpayer. So while, you know, maybe it's sort of the, that the municipal tax will not, but at least there'll be a little bit of a decrease in the school tax, right. which is obviously yeah. a larger portion of your tax bill. Anyways, this is school tax. Mm -hmm. So the, the two rates that we have um, is, Why? Sorry, I have a it's uh, 99, 99.87 cents oh, on the homestead tax rate. And, 99.53 cents on the non. And of course, the local agreement rate could change a little bit, and that just depends on, you know, if you have maybe a veteran that file, or I have someone moved out of town, moved in, so this is obviously based on last year's, but you're going to be, you're, it stays the same year right So I would entertain a motion to accept the rates, um, which is uh, 99.87 cents on the homestead and 99.53 cents on the non-residential tax rate. So sure. move. 19. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded? Paul, 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 Paul,
Okay, we're gonna get back at let uh, <coughs> Greg take us through these. Uh, I think most of well, I think all these are. Uh, they're all financial policies. So. Yeah. So this was a uh, this is a follow up on the the plan that Teresa talked about uh, moving forward with with some of the recommendations from the uh, um, the accountants. Um, so I actually Teresa put these policies together. I don't know if you have anything really just for your review at this point. If there's anything in them that you want to discuss, we. Yeah, actually, I mean, I'm, I'm, if there's nothing to discuss, then you should adopt them. Right. I mean, right. I mean, they're pretty well ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, we use the, based on the, the LCT model financial policies that they put out, and obviously treat them for, um, for each town, you know, depending on, on um, practices. And of course, if you had any saw the audit, there was a letter, obviously, of, of uh, you know, no real significant deficiencies, but certainly fixing, already made management responses to anything they found, and then things going forward, this actually covers a few of them, and we have some others in the way. And of course, Greg already done. So if you have questions, I'm happy to go through them with you and um, change the suggestions, whatever. I mean, I think, I think the policies, I mean, I don't know if we're ready to adopt policies tonight that be up to the board, but, um, you know, I know uh, I just barely had time to go through and read through them all, which I think is a really good step in the right direction. Um, you know, usually the Sullivan powers some of the comments they've had the last couple of years have yep. would mainly be fixed through these policies, which is good. Yep. I mean, I would just hate to rush through a, you know, policy acceptance tonight based on yep. not really been through it thoroughly, unless the board members feel that they've had enough time to, to look through them. I can certainly answer individual questions on anything, and I can talk a little bit about them and, if you'd like. And you and I had talked earlier, Therese, about um, getting the the uh, representative from Sullivan and Powers to come out and maybe go through the yeah. go through the audit with us, which I think would be helpful. Um, he always, you know, good. he comes in and, and you know basically will answer any of your questions and kind of outline some things. I'll bring call Fred and figure out the schedule with some. He will be here for two days. Um, not to say Fred, but team will be here for two days. I think next week, next Monday, Tuesday. We all, you know, they come for two days before you close the fiscal year. No, which is great, you know, sort of preliminary work. Uh, but I'll talk to Fred. He always is excited to speak to select boards. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea. I don't know. Have we had? I don't think we. I know we've had the. Um, no, the Sullivan and Powers audit every year. They haven't been current enough to. But um, it would be good to have, you know, get a time slot yeah. for the mm -hmm. next meeting. Is that what you're saying? Possibly. Yeah, I'll talk to Fred. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his schedule is. Because that'd be That's the fourth. Yeah, it's his time of year. You know, I'm not sure what his schedule is. He's yeah. just come down from Montpelier, but I can ask him. Yeah, it'd be nice to have him in. You can ask him some yeah, questions. I, I went through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. I didn't understand most of it, but yeah. I see the only thing I saw a lot of figures with parentheses around. Yeah, sure. Which is yeah. negative stuff. Right. And yeah, wait until yeah. you see next year. So. That's right. And then the thing, too, is yeah, about uh, is uh, once you're done with your audit, if you have a bound copy, if you're not going to keep it, I'd like it back. It's just yeah. nice to have yeah. it on it. But certainly, if you have any questions about the audit, if you want to come in and sit down with me, I'm happy to sit down and talk to you about it. Um, and uh, certainly, Fred can answer questions, but I'm always happy to answer questions. Look, I wasn't happy when I saw it. I lost you know, another 90000 you know, in the deficit. I was hoping for better, obviously. But you know, this budget current year that we're working on, I think, is holding <laughs> tight. But but um, could you want me to just talk briefly about these? So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think we go through. I had a question about the fraud prevention, and, and um, just at the very beginning, it, uh, it clearly is a mechanism for employees and officers of the town. Um, I'm curious why there wouldn't be a mechanism for voters or or residents to. Uh, exercise the same kind of concern to bring uh, reports of irregularity to, uh, even though they typically may not have the same kind of exposure, but if, if one or was to get that kind of uh, exposure to see irregularities, 
what kind of mechanism would be in this policy to provide for uh, a voter or a resident to bring this concern? I think that any resident has always has the opportunity. To They're not those. listed in here. No, but I think obviously anyone would bring that. I think this is more in line for like an employee, so it's kind of like a whistleblower thing, so that somebody couldn't get in trouble, you know, down the road if they brought something and regularly their but, it, but it also controls the way we respond to it. Yep, if someone bring, if someone blows a whistle, then the chair of the select board or the town manager, whoever is the person who's been reported to, has to follow the protocol. Right. If we don't include <laughs> voters in that, mm -hmm. they can be told, thank you very much. We'll take that into consideration. And, and they don't have any recourse to say, I brought this report mm -hmm. and nobody took action on it. Sure. I mean, I think, and I think was, it would be worth we could thinking add, about. It. You know, add something for voters, I think, that or for residents. I think it was more for, as I said, it was, it was to protect employees as well as um, public officials. Yeah, it's more of an internal policy. Yeah, certainly. Were. But, but um, let me look, sure at, look at another policy for. Um, I just see why why it wouldn't you know I mean I don't care if it does or not necessarily I'm just curious why it wouldn't because yeah. uh, um, and particularly in this case um, I do know though like in the past we we've, we've had uh, you know people can bring concerns uh, to an officer or uh, or an employee of the town and that person you can. Uh, create the report, uh, it's just the veracity mm -hmm. in something like that that is not necessarily, uh, you know, it's not necessarily backed up by a line of command. You know, it could be that the policy was not inclusive of them because this triggers what could be a costly investigation, so maybe there was something else to it, you know, as far as when it was designed, since it was more of an internal. But let me look and see, I can certainly reach out to the LCT or Fred and ask them. Yeah. You know what he's seen other towns do as far as including um you know what are residents um taxpayers recourse so i can mm -hmm. happily look for that residents and taxpayer recourse i think you know obviously i mean you hate to say it but right, that mostly their recourse is they hope that when they come to you or to someone else that someone will follow it up but unfortunately i guess the history has not yeah, but it says shall investigate and that yeah and that is uh, I think really important and it's a it's part of it's basically the teeth of this of this policy yeah is saying that if there are reports of irregularity so we're gonna there's gonna be there's gonna be an investigation yeah. and, and in the past we haven't had this policy but um, we have taken action on um, yeah. similar issues and um, Right, because there is and because we knew that we needed to, but in the case of a, of a of a policy, I just want to make sure that unless there's some reason why we cannot, yeah, no, no, we could, because I, mean, I, I can see the statute about using um, that before. So let me ask, like I said, I can look because I agree that I think it was really more right before. Well, obviously, I think the assumption is that <laughs> officers and employees are going to have the exposure that's right. going to allow them to the observation of these kinds of irregularities, and right. the public generally isn't. Right. Let's see what could happen. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, we, I can look into that. Particularly if you know, <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, somebody no notices problem. a lot of pizza boxes. <laughs> right. Exactly. Anyway, I, I, you know, I think it's. Other than that, I get it. So some of them just basically outline what you will get for financial reporting, which is what you get now, mm -hmm. what the department heads will get, you know, cash receipts. I did have a conversation with, with Tim because he does the, uh, you know, uh, water sewer. It's about him, you know, not accepting payments and money for the cash receipts. The other thing that we wanted was return check policy. That's something that um, check the transfer station wanted. Because you know we will redeposit the check, but then it's you know collecting it. It costs you money by the time the checks come down. It's like a letter, so that was something he wanted as well. So he was happy to see that in there. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to look into the others and have any questions. Certainly, let me know. And I, and I think it's Other great for me that language. I mean, some of these policies you would think would kind of go along with the whole common sense of yeah 
business, but you know, just good to have just like looking at the happen. debt, the debt management policy. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you always want to move your debt to a long-term debt. Right. You know? Exactly. And however, one of the big issues that we just had in this town was we didn't do that for yeah, a long exactly. time, and we kept it on the short term. Mm -hmm. You know, and now we're paying for that. So, exactly. um, I mean, some of these do seem, you know, a little petty, but yeah. in the long term will be beneficial for the town. I think that's why the LCT, I mean, at one point, sad as it is, Vermont was the investment capital of the United States. And so that's shortly after all of that was coming out. That's when the LCT went and started updating and creating these financial, these model financial policies and sent them out to the towns. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and to, to work on it to take care of some of that stuff. Because if too many people do too many things, have too many controls, we're not being able to get financial reporting That kind of ties in with the recommendations that are made in here for some of the things that you noticed that <laughs> exactly. need to yeah. clean up a little bit. And it's no different than you know annual audits, which yeah. one again would think that you do that annually, but mm -hmm. there was a three year period where we didn't do that. So, yeah. um, I have to say, I thought the management letter would be a lot more painful, but when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I was figured we'd be taken to the woodshed, which was fine, but it wasn't as bad as I mm -hmm. thought. So. Mm -hmm. So, um, other than the concern that I raised about voters or town townspeople with the fraud prevention, I I don't see anything. I think it'd be I'm fine with at least um, making a motion to accept the other three policies, or even that one. You know, as long as there isn't some something we're overlooking on that. I can bring that one back. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I think I can go along with the other, the other ones and we can look into that. I'm amazed that we didn't have these in place already. Right. Yeah, we've talked about it for three or four years. You'd be amazed what a lot of towns in Vermont <laughs> have it. I, I just sat a select for me in another town a couple weeks ago and they don't have a purchasing policy. You know, no guidelines to yeah. purchase it. You know, yeah. um, I mean, I, I'd like to say that we're, you know, further ahead than in most of the smaller towns. You know, anyway. So there's still a lot of smaller towns that are still up here doing things the whole five things. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, at some point they'll probably be in a situation that we were in. And, and, um, I, I think the policies are great. I think that it, it keeps. Um, our promise to the taxpayers, which is to make sure that you know that these types of issues that we've had in the past don't reoccur, um, and you know policy usually is the way to go to, to put the information out before our, our employees to follow. So um, I, I believe uh, Carl's got a motion out there. Yeah, I made a motion. Sure. Okay, <clears throat> what was the language of the motion? To accept these policies, the uh, the three policies, which were the debt management, the accounting, auditing, financial reporting policy, and the cash receipts and return turn check policy. Okay. And I and then the fraud one we were gonna the fraud one based on uh, some research on yep. to make sure we weren't overlooking something. You did those. Yep. Okay. Okay. And same thing here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we'll uh uh second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Do you know? I have them here. Yeah, actually. So this one's a cash receipt one. <coughs> The debt management one, the accounting one, and the cash receipts policies as written, and then the fourth one, the fraud one. There's a fraud policy yeah. based on right. evaluating well, the, okay. whether or not we're overlooking something. Okay. 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 okay, I answered my own question. <laughs> my favorite questions. Well done.
Any further discussion in regards to the policies? Yeah. We will move on. The, Thank you for uh, putting that to you. The uh, next up is the uh, FY19 Municipal Roads Grant application, which we talked about um, last year. I know and this conforms with Act. The so yeah, the net, well, it's the municipal roads general for general permit. Yeah. So the state came up with a, this general permit, which is a stormwater permit that basically has mandates that then over the next few years we have escalated um, requirements for our hydraulically connected dirt roads, and to help with some of these these mandates, they've two rivers is in the state have come out with this, um, the roads, it's the grant and aid program. We did this last year. Um, the work actually is going to be completed this probably next week um, for last year's grant. Um, but this is just a funding mechanism which, which kind of helps with some of those mandates. Um, it allows us to install best management practices which include things like um, knocking down berms or rock lining ditches, um, all sorts of different things, cutting ditches, things like that. Things that we would do anyway, sort of routine maintenance that we would do anyway. Um, but it's a funding, it's, it's funding through them to, to do this additional work on these hydrologically connected roadways. So we have to, by the end, or by June 22nd, we have to return the, uh, the letter here saying that we are interested in the program and we'll automatically be enrolled into it. Um, we'll get, uh, I think we got, Last year, I want to say we've got one, like eighteen thousand dollars. I think I don't know if you remember. I think it was about eighteen thousand dollars in funding that we got, and uh, it's an eighty twenty deal. And what we do is we we basically do majority of the work anyway. So we have our in kind is is covered, no problem. Uh, then we get reimbursed for anything over that twenty percent. So a really good program uh, allows us to kind of keep up with some of the mandates and and uh, and to move forward with our roads that need that need work done to them. So. What I'm asking for is, uh, is a, a motion to, uh, to sign this letter. Um, it's a letter of interest to participate in the Municipal Roads Grant and Aid Program. It's the exact same thing we did last year. And well, from the looks of it, the schedule will get the maximum payout, yeah. which is 19500 Yeah, we're eligible for that, depending on how much we spend. Yes. And yep. our in kind would be $4,800. Right. And that's what we did, uh, same thing. We, we were eligible for the max last year too, or, or this year, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it all just depends on how much we spend, right? Yep. And this is, this is for the roadway maintenance and so forth. This is not the grant that we would apply for for the bridge. No, yeah. this is not. That's a structures grant. Right. Yeah, this is just to do road, just to do maintenance on dirt roadways that are hydrologically right. connected. Hydrological. Yep. Well, I make a motion that we uh, sign the letter of intent to participate in the municipal road <coughs> program. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Is, that a, is that just for your design? Or nope. Design? There's three blocks, but everybody feel free. The first three signs, we don't have to. Sign the staff. Yeah. It's a I left the room. You guys can fit on the line with me. <laughs> we can all hang out. It's oh, okay. I, I have to take up a whole line. <laughs> I've got to leave the whole line. I've got to leave the whole line. I've got to get out my quill pen. She'll just email me and say, um, Rita will email me and say, what project do you want to do? Let me know. And we'll take a look and we'll move forward on. So next item, 
This kind of thing is the board and loan discharge. He's going to take us through that. Is that Greg, are you going to take us through that? Or? Just, uh, what's your name? It's, it's just a loan that was paid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it came out on the audit. I was yeah. doing some work and realized that um, she was reporting and paid off the loan. So when I went to look at the paperwork, I realized that while she paid it off, we had to discharge the loan. Mm -hmm. So obviously that needs to be taken care of. So um, she paid it, she got paid this note in the audit, and um, I think he would just make a motion to authorize the town manager to sign the mortgage to discharge. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. And unfortunately, this is, this is the burned out diner, isn't it? Yeah. It's open for. It was paid off. Yeah. Paid no, no, I just mean it. Unfortunately, yes, yeah, it's yes. not, nothing for her to celebrate. It's it's home. Home. No, so then we'll sign it and we'll put it in the land records and we'll also send her a copy. Like, she has them for her records. Sounds good. Unbelievable amount of paperwork to say one simple thing. <laughs> I'm glad I got it electronically. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. Well, you're like, I told her not to photocopy the audit. I'm like, just send them to the link. Yeah, that was great. The no, it was fine. Give the other ones a final copy of the audit. I'd rather so, do it that I was one. like, don't do that to <laughs> Pages. I mean, keep the letter part, though, or do you want that? Take us through your sure. So, uh, so my packet, yeah, my, my report is in your packet. So, just Green a couple. Oh, I'm sorry, you're doing that I'm sorry, we have the Green oh, yeah, I forgot we added that. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. We added so. the Green Mountain Power easement. Yep. Okay. So, um, again, this is just a it's a, an easement for, for some overhead lines, um, for the Gilead Brook Bridge with the realignment of the bridge coming next summer, I believe. Um, Green Mountain's going to require it's going to be required to move their lines. And so we have a piece of property um, from the FEMA buyout property there that they're going to be, they need a easement from us. And this is just the paperwork for that easement. So they can do their, their own. Poles are on the west side of the road now, and they're going to be moved they to the east side of the road. Right. Right. So they're just asking for a, a uh, easement for those overhead lines. Um, so I just need a motion to uh, allow me to, to sign this. Yep, so it would be just for the sign. Make a motion to authorize Greg to sign for the easement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now. 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 So, yeah, staff report. Just a couple highlights on this real quick. Um, so, Teresa and I have been looking over um, some of the job descriptions of, of some of the people in town and, and kind of analyzing where they're at and how valid they are and, and putting together what we think is a more valid job description. And one of the positions that kind of shook out of this was the bookkeeper position. So we went through and and really, uh, and she did the, the majority of this, but did, did a lot of research into what is that position really doing at this point? Uh, what are the tasks that make up that job description? Um, and when we got done looking at it, there was a, a, a revised job description that was put together and it. It ended up being, after we quantified the tasks that were in that, it, only, it looked like we were looking at about 15 hours per week. So um, we really feel that that's a, a valid number. Um, the person that's doing it is going to look and see if there's maybe other things that we missed, possibly. Um, but we, we think that all the tasks have been involved, that are all, are all included in that new job description. And it looks like it's a part-time position at this point. So um, unless something significantly changes between now and then, we're going to move this to a part-time position uh, in July, I think, is our, our window for that. Um, and I think the bookkeeper position was a part-time position years ago. Yeah. Until we had the, we were, we were down one, one and a half people in the office at one point, and then it became a full -time. Right, right. And now that we're, we're kind of at full staff now, there's just, we just don't see that the job, that the, that the workload is there to justify a full-time position. So cool. it would be moving to a, a 15 to 16 hour a week position. Um, this says July 1st, but that may take a little bit longer than anticipated. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm not How does that tie in with 
with the work with the uh, rec department uh, with the that, pool and all that. That's going to be separately evaluated. Exactly. I just went over yeah. that today with them, so I'm going to talk to Greg about that tomorrow just to see if we now have a list of those duties which did not exist before and were not in anybody's job description. So now we got a breakdown of that. I got this afternoon and haven't had a chance to sit down with Greg. That's kind so. of morphed into the... It kind of morphed into that position only because somebody left and there was right. nobody left to pick up the pieces. Right. So whether or not that would be the same person or someone else or morph into the pool director's job is you know, something right. that Greg But the bookkeeper job itself has a new job description with, yeah. with the actual tasks that are involved now. Yeah. And the recreation would have its own job description and whoever ends up with that. Um, town hall painting, uh, I got the grant agreement back, so we're all good to go on that. That should happen in July. Uh, they're scheduled to be here in July to, to paint the, all the way to the top. All the white will be white again, all the way up. Um, so. That was a quick thing. It only took three years. It only took me. It only took me one year. So. Um, water master plan. Tim and I will be meeting with the engineers in the state next week, I believe it is, to go over the water master plan. We're about 80% complete on that. Uh, we should be at about the point where we're starting to see some of the, um, the capital improvement stuff start to kind of show up. Um, so we'll see where we're at. We'll kind of see what shakes out with that. Uh, preliminary, preliminarily, I can't say that word, but initially, they were saying that the, uh, I can't ever say that word, that the, um, the well, the tank, is probably not going to need to be rebuilt from the ground up. So if that holds true, um, we think we'll just be, yeah, it could be just as, as simple as a liner and some work on the outside, some very minimal type stuff, save us a ton of money. So, but we'll see what other projects kind of shake out of this too. So, um, let's see what else do I have as far as highlights for you. Uh, bridge number 33, uh, this is um, the, the bridge out there on, that, that we're having, we have a structures grant for. Um, the final design is, I got a copy of the final design for that and it's, it looks good other than there's an, an area on the, I believe it's the northeast corner, I have to look at the plans again, but there is some, um, an easement acquisition that we have to look at. Part of the project for sort of our, some of our long-term maintenance. Uh, and some of the construction itself goes into private property. So we're gonna, I'm gonna have to get with the adjacent property owner and see if I can't get a, an easement from them. It's a small piece of property. You're smiling like you probably know the owners. <laughs> well, I knew the owners. Okay. Yeah, but okay. The, it wouldn't be a... It, it's just a sliver, but it's it's just another piece that we have to do before yeah, we I mean, it's put the bank Yeah, I mean, it's just on the bank there anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so I'll be working on trying to, to acquire a little uh, an easement for that small piece of property there. Um, we've been working on the pool. I don't know if you've been by there lately, but we've been working diligently on the pool, doing a little bit of maintenance here and there. Uh, we were seeing significant water loss, so we've been doing some, some patching and where we can find places we think might be the culprit. Uh, we think we've, we've found it. There was a lot of holes around the, the uh, drain pipes uh, and the return pipes, actually both. So all the plumbing had some some surface cracks on it um, and some rusting areas that we siliconed all those up. Drained the pool down, siliconed it all back up, and we've, we've brought the pool back up. So we're going to see how she holds. Um, so the, the, all the lining, coating, that been, and painting that we've done over the last... That's okay. This so is, this is not, This is the piping, the actual plumbing where it... Doesn't the, the lining meet those? Yeah, it's the, it's the penetration through the walls and things like that. It's just weathered and it's probably, you know... it's, so it's the actual concrete or whatever. Yeah, concrete. yeah, it's the actual piping itself or, or even the glue or the grout or whatever they've used I around see. it. We siliconed all that up and we siliconed the, um, the bubblers or the, the little things on top and um, hopefully we've got it. We, we were losing about 7,000 gallons a day. Mm -hmm. Which we which we've been doing. I, mean, I think over the years they've lost about an inch a day. Nobody, and so we want to. Nobody qualified. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I should have told you the numbers. An inch, just think it's an inch. Um, but over that surface area, it's about six to seven thousand gallons. Um, so we think we've solved that though. So um, typically through evaporation and all that, based on some other factors, we should be losing about a quarter inch to a half an inch a day. So we're hoping to get to that number real soon. So anyway, we've been working on that real diligently. They've done some painting, we've done some deck work, trying to make it smoothed up and kind of make it look really nice and take away some tripping hazards and things like that. So um, we'll be working on a dry hydrant. There's an up on Campbell Road. Um, the fire chief is, is a, has um, 
been working with a landowner up there, the pond, and he's gotten a grant for this, like we did last year. Um, it's again, it's a, I think it's a 75-25 grant, but it's in kind, and we do, we get our money back easily. We we get our in kind work, no problem. So uh, I'll be putting that out to bid. I'm hoping this week to get that installed in the next month or so. Um, Got the truck. I'm sure you've seen it around town. The truck and the trailer is running around town. Cool. Uh, we're, I'm shopping Sanders. We'll probably end up getting a Sander just right down the road here. They they seem to be the most reasonable. Um, so yeah, that's that's my report. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to have, glad to answer them for you. No, it looks the uh, rec center looks like it's okay. yeah. There's it's real good focus. Yeah, you know the the. The girls have done a really good job of, of coming up with some marketing plans and, and getting some programming out there. I think it's going to make a big difference. There's a, I don't I know if just, you've seen any of the pamphlets or anything. I would just um, point out that there was a flyer that was uh, posted on social media um, talking about a yoga mm -hmm. class, I think, um, and it made no mention of where it was going to be. It was poster posted on the town of Bethel and referenced the recreation department, but the, old, the yeah. poster itself yeah. said nothing about it. We, we are, this is a work in progress. <laughs> um, some of the, that's, that's been one of the points I've been trying to work on because uh, a lot of that programming is not necessarily pool oriented and everything was about the pool, the pool, the pool, the pool. Well, we're, we're trying to shift that to more of a a rec facility as opposed to just a pool. Absolutely. Uh, so that's good to note that we need to put that location on there. Yeah, all the time. Every put that location and that address out there as much as we can. But we're referencing that out there. We're referring to that now as the rec facility, not the pool necessarily. Because yeah. yeah. there's a lot more to the to what we're doing this year than just the pool. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? And then I think you have the financial statements there too. Oh, the. Um SNS Auto. Mm -hmm. you, know, we, you were talking to them about the numbers of vehicles that they've got over there. Yes, I I haven't really gone too far with that at this point. I know that they're getting they're more and more and more. Um, part of that is because we we're trying to use them to test our water, and I don't really want to piss them off. Um, we, we're required by the state to test the first service after the chlorine. So our chlorine comes out and it goes into called a chlorine contact chamber. And then we're required to test the first service line. Well, we're not technically, what we're testing now is not the first service line. And I think SNS is gonna be the first one. So we've been trying to, to get in the door there because that means we have to get keys from them. We have to access their building, you know, every day. Um, so that's been part of the hold up with that, not the whole thing. But um, but you're correct. I mean, they they are in violation. Permit, they're, they're in violation of their of their permit, yes, because mm -hmm. they've got too many cars there, and they're in the uh, the surface water. Um, right. The, you know, ground water protection area. area. Ground water protection area. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. That. Um, I think Tracy's has faucets. Tracy's plumbing. They're there every morning. Six o'clock. Yeah, they own the building. We're still we're still not 100 percent sure that's the first location. There's I, I'm trying to figure out how because things tie in right there. It's a whole lot of engineering going on, but that is potentially the the first one, and that's something that in our uh, in that letter the state gave us one of the requirements was to change and verify even town hall or the town office. That's not has to be the first the first one on the line, the first mm -hmm. customer on the line. We may end up having to do like a yard hydrant somewhere because it's the first first customer. So, um, but I'll revisit that and see what we can do about getting them down to, to the, the number of cars that they should be at. Just thinking, you know, the potential leakage and, and all those kinds of things going on so close to the well. Yeah, and we've got, I've got a map that shows that, that groundwater protection area, mm -hmm. yeah. plain as day. Well, I think the other part of it is just the, the, the degree of emphasis that we've placed on, um, on bylaws and zoning and, and development in not only in the town but in that particular vicinity. Right. And right. making sure that if we're asking people to accept the decisions of the DRB and accept the limitations of their permits, that it's only fair that sure. everybody plays by the same rules. Sure. No, I'll, I'll put that back on top of the pile for sure. Any 
anybody have any questions in regards to the budget status? I try to write notes on there. <laughs> Sometimes I hear it forward from a buyer on the budget, so I just write notes on there so that you can see. I think the only question I had was under the sewer portion. There's um, there's some engineering charges mm -hmm. that you had identified. Um, they also got a grant for that. So has are we still waiting on that grant money, or is that grant, or is that? It's under the other up above, I think. The present balance within the. No, we could well, be, that was yeah. Yeah, we could be waiting for a. Yeah, there's one reimbursement I think left. That has okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Other than that, I think there's one more. I can't remember myself, but that was the, that was for the sewer, uh, the asset management plan that we got a grant for. And there was probably, I'm sure there was a, a match. There was probably a 20 percent match for that too. Oh, that could be if there was a match. Yeah, I bet there was. Sewer. Um, I'll take a look for us to make a note. Sewer. Um, grant. Yeah. Now that we are, now that we are getting. You know, very close to the end of the physical year. It's interesting. You know, I, you know, our bookkeeping is much better for this past physical year than it has been. It's probably not where we want it to be because you guys haven't been in place the whole 12 months. But you know, there are you know these items that you know get budgeted for zero or little that end up having you know 20 grand on it at the end of the year so those are things that during the budget process we're going to look at a little harder you know things like uh, uh, have, uh, others and sometimes it's <laughs> other. yeah, yeah, yeah. when in doubt if it says other that's <laughs> yeah. not good yeah <laughs> but, uh, like if there's a if there's not a budget amount there should be something there or mm -hmm. could, you, could you explain the uh, under the in the sewer mm -hmm. the solid waste expenses there's a provision sewer. for bad debt Sewer or transportation? No, solid waste. Okay. Yeah. There's a provision for bad debt. Yep, so that's true. And over on the side, you, it says road off uncollected debt, but I, I don't know what the rest of it means. P U B E T S. Oh, per That's the joint board. That's per. So, yeah, okay. they had agreed to write off five uh, okay. months, maybe about 30 right. grand worth of debt. And so then we really? agreed. Well, no, we, we took it off the books. Well, we took it off the books. To collect it elsewhere. Yes. So we did create a revenue line for that unfortunately mm -hmm. because then you see it trickle in later. Um, yeah. and there may be some of it that will be uncollectible. We we'll just collect it off one one here. Yeah. And you'll see a little bit. Some of it's been turned over to an attorney for collection. Good. So but yeah, and there's a the revenue line so we get some more. But mm -hmm. some of it you'll never see. Any other questions in here to the budget? I think Teresa's done a very good job on this. It's a lot more informative than I've seen in here. Here's absolutely. Well, we try to write notes. Yeah. It helps me because I look at them too, and then I don't have to keep looking them up on, oh, that's yeah. what that was, or, you know, or when I come here and Chris says, oh, what's in that column? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. So then I don't remember to make a note. Trust them. Yeah, I don't know. No. It'll be nice once we have a full year. Yeah. You know, next year at this time we'll have hopefully everything coded correctly. And Bugs out too. I mean, you know, we're building. A, we build a budget off from previous, you know, not great budget. And so we did the best so that we can help us. So next year will be better, but the year after that will be even better because there's stuff now that we've seen that's come up. And like, oh, we should have budgeted for that. And um, but you know what you know. And then if you're trying to look at basically, we're trying to build the budget off actuals that were incorrect. So I, mean, I feel good about the budget, but I definitely feel better about the one after that. Right. You know, or just like we talked about with like legal and auditing ends, you know, just for so many years, every year we budgeted the same amount, knowing that it was going to overrun every single year. You know, just, you know, which we finally did for this coming year, we yeah. did bump it up to 50,000 yeah. total yeah. between the two lines. And there's certain things but, too, you know, certain things you were, generally, in my experience, if you get sued, the LCT will cover it, you'll pay a $500 deductible in your case. Mm -hmm. You know, when the water is out, it's a whole other, you know, they don't want to touch that. So, um, but a lot of times you don't see those massive legal bills because you would have been covered. Well, plus on the auditing thing, you know, the yeah. company feels comfortable with us again so that they offered us the reduced 
you know, right. rates for the next three years, which is good. So those are all good, good savings mm -hmm. going down. Yeah, I think it's a pretty significant savings. Yeah. yeah. And the legal end of things, you just don't know. I mean, you could go a year and yeah. not have a single English, and then you could have $80,000 in group. Yeah. And you just and don't know, and it's hard to plan for that. It is, and, and it's unusual that you see them that aren't covered by your insurance. So yeah. that's unusual. Mm -hmm. I can figure it out in person and talk to Greg and talk to the insurance company. Yeah, well, we must have fairly good I don't remember looking at that, but we had a sizable human resources legal yeah. bill yep. that we had no no way of judging what that was going to be. Right. All right, moving on to the constable report. Uh, again, I, I see him out and about very often. I, um, he's still getting quite a bit of action down, down that Pleasant Street section. Um, 67. So he's, uh, <laughs> you know, there's some people flying through there. Yeah, when we talked to Mark about uh, putting up a pole, or even Alan putting up a pole and they've moved one of the speed signs. You know what, I was thinking we could have speed limit signs that we moved around too. <laughs> <laughs> like if you can find a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign, we can move it, we can spend a week out in Lilliesville and we can move it. <laughs> <laughs> Say, do play double do. Been. Okay. <laughs> sure. But the radar sign is. I think yeah, it's up on North Road, and there was I think it was a hot area for a while, but it's, I think it's probably time to move it. But I think you're seeing you know combination of there's a lot of new pavement in this area, you know, in the town. Plus now that it's nice, you know, the, the bikes are out and all the tourists are in here, and yeah, people are moving. So these work zone signs were they? Left over just because we had to work the cones out in that space. They were just as just a, a pre warning. Yeah, so no, it's thing. good. I just was curious. I didn't see any active. Work. They were up all weekend. Mm -hmm. They were there as well. <coughs> yeah, they were. Yeah, they're working on it now. Yeah. Actually, but they were left over the weekend just as a kind of a, a, a yeah. Yeah, pre warning. Yeah, just paving the whole one, so yeah, mm -hmm. good to go. So it should be good to go now. Yeah, they're doing both of them. Finally. Yep. That was that was good, but I mean, even you know, we we talked about it, you know, a couple of years ago about how to reduce speed in the town, and you know, of course, the common things come up with speed signs, and you know, so what was it, three years? Or so we did a we, hole in the parking area. Speed signs to the budget, you know, and then it was, you know, we've increased the constable's presence, mm -hmm. and even with all that, you, you would think that people would slow down, but it, it, it doesn't seem like people are going any slower today <laughs> than they were three years ago. Other than, you know, we'll get some revenue off ticket sales and, you know, hey, not like you get anything. People are going to go where people want to go. Yeah. Whatever they're comfortable driving. But maybe if we have a continual work zone down here. We could. We'll just put, yeah, we'll just put <laughs> permanent flags up and say, you just put the work zone down there with the zone. Zone. I like it. I like it. If they won't let us reduce the speed, we can just have it be a work zone. We could put orange cones, permanent orange cones. <laughs> Take Mark's cruiser, leave it over here on this side of the mountain, and just park it out there with nobody in it. And it it's a very effective yeah. speed of time. Yeah. You would think, but Paul Feeney used to park his cruiser there at his yeah. house, and the trucks come blasting uh, across that bridge. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And the cruiser doesn't seem to make any difference uh, at all. Yeah. Well, it's like a majority of the people he gets are out of state. You know, one, I'm sure. You know, it's not like you're getting the same person in town, you know. Well, I would bring that people out there. Well, they, they will, I mean, it's scary because some of those, you know, like we're saying, those 67 and the 50s, that it's a questionable 50 to begin with, where, where that stretch is at, and he's getting that 67, so. But power to him, he's been slowing you down. Everybody take a look at the select board minutes mm -hmm. for May 23rd. Oh, okay. What is that? Yeah. May 21. Okay, on the agenda it says 23rd. Is so it 21st to, to correct date? For the... Yeah. 21st. 
twenty first is the correct date on the minutes. Okay, so I need to correct the date. No, no, no it's no, correct in yours. It's all the agenda. Twenty third. So I just. Oh. Okay. Sure okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Next oh. is me. I approve <laughs> this. So we're good. Okay. Okay. So I am Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. She's not here. I hadn't seen any uh, anything in the minutes that uh, stuck out to me. No. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Written. All in favor? All right. All right. Let's have it. Lisa is spared for another two weeks. <laughs> Taking it easy on you. We'll have to. Thank you. I'll have to get Paul. Paul will look at it. Get you next. Good. Nothing to get. Yes. Paul Pierce. Technical errors. Good. I mean, I just read through. I mean, it's you're never going to get every single word. You know, it's. No. That kind of right. generically fits together with the conversation we have. Luckily, we have this too. That's great. Yeah, the work is great. Yeah. As we found out. As we will find out. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, so the DRB yes. reviewed the minutes. The DRB reviewed the restaurant permit. Seems like the compromise, I guess. We're work in progress with a re with uh, revisiting the issue at the end of the summer season. Yep. The only thing I noticed on is the November sixth public meeting for uh, a public hearing rather to review the results. Yeah, that's what I was kind it's of just follow up. Uh, yeah, I think that they are giving them conditional uh, permits to make sure that they follow and that, that it's success. You know, sometimes these things are theoretical. Mm -hmm. You can say that it has the music has to be done by 10, but does it actually get done at 10 and is 10 too late? You know, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you know, in, in practice they'll have a better idea of whether or not it's legitimate or not. I think it's a great idea. Good way to do it. Favorite? All right. 